Now, this is going to be that two in one lecture where I am going to discuss progressive and acute retinal necrosis. Uh, since the culprit in both cases is varicella zoster virus, and uh, now we will start with progressive retinal necrosis first. As usual, we will go with introduction. Uh, progressive retinal necrosis PRN, also known as progressive or posterior outer retinal necrosis, is a rare but devastating form of necrotizing retinitis, which is usually caused by varicella zoster virus. Um, and possibly other herpes virus, but we are just considering the zoster virus here. It occurs predominantly in patients with uh, acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, but may be associated with other immunocompromised states, particularly drug induced states. Uh, the prognosis is extremely poor. Uh, with no perception of light, the outcome is more than uh, that is the outcome in more than half of the patients. Uh, now, patients uh, will present with rapidly progressive unilateral or bilateral visual loss and uh, anterior uveitis and retritis. They are minimal in contrast to CMV retinitis and acute uh, retinal necrosis. Uh, however, uh, retinitis is uh, uh, classified into three stages. In the early stage, uh, there is a, a multifocal homogeneous yellow-white deep retinal infiltrates and which might involve uh, macular area. Uh, in the very early stages, which uh, often uh, give us an appearance of a cherry red uh, macula. Now, this is that deep infiltrate here in this uh, figure, and you can also see that the macular area, the central macular area, is also giving us that vibe of cherry red macula. Uh, the second stage is that of the established or the middle uh, stage, with, where the signs typically spread. Uh, rapidly around the retina with very extensive full thickness and process. That pink appearance of retina is just gone from here. And uh, here you can see that not even there is no vasculitis. Um, signs of vasculitis are absent or mild and significant hemorrhage is uncommon. And as inflammation clears, very linear translucency is also seen. So this, um, as you can see here, the area of the retina which is involved is completely dead. So it, hence the white appearance of the retina. In the late stage, rhythmatogenous uh, detachment is common and as is the optic atrophy. Now, Coming towards investigation, vitreous or aqueous PCR assay for viral DNA. Uh, antibody assay is not very effective. So, finally, the treatment is immune rescue with uh, antiretroviral treatment together with aggressive antiviral therapy, uh, for example, intravitreal and intravenous gamciclovir and phoscarnate. Um, vitro-retinal surgery for retinal detachment often yields poor result. Now, here we can see that pre-retinal, uh, uh, pre-treatment, uh, pre uh, deep yellow-white infiltrates with well-defined borders everywhere, and that is post-treatment regression of lesions in this fungus. So. This whole area, the lesions everywhere, the white lesions, they are gone here. <laughs> so, coming towards the next topic, which is acute retinal necrosis, and again starting with the introduction. Acute retinal necrosis is a rare but devastating nec uh, necrotizing retinitis. It typically affects otherwise healthy individuals as opposed to in progressive uh, cases where uh, only immunocompromised patients are involved. 
and tends to be caused by herpes simplex virus in younger patients and zoster in older patients. So zoster is a uh, culprit here as well. Uh, other herpes virus are also suspected of course uh, we cannot rule them out. The prognosis is relatively poor again with more than half of patients eventually achieving only 660 as a result of retinal and optic nerve ischemia or ignatogenous RD. Now, patients uh, with acute retinal uh, necrosis has been reported following and occurring uh, simultaneously with herpes simplex virus encephalitis and herpetic uh, skin infection. Um, ocular features uh, patients usually present initially unilaterally with blurred vision and focus. Uh, pain is usually a feature. The American uh, Uriatic Society has uh, a criteria for diagnosis and uh, first of all, the first criteria is uh, prominent inferior uveitis and uteritis uh, like uh, pan uveitis and episcleritis and scleritis may occur. One or more, the second one, one or more discrete foci of peripheral retinal necrosis, deep yellow white infiltrates with well defined. Uh, borders as they are shown here in the peripheral area. Retinal hemorrhages can occur but are generally less prominent than uh, cytomegalovirus retinitis. The acute lesions resolve after 6 to 12 weeks, leaving behind necrotic age retina with hyperpigmented borders as it is seen here the hyperpigmented borders secondary rigmatogenous rd is a major problem uh, visual morbidity third one is the circumferential spread of retinal involvement uh, posterior pole involvement is late and optic neuritis is sometimes a feature then comes the occlusive retinal vasculitis, um, including arteries. Uh, pre retinal uh, new vascularization can develop and may lead to vitreous hemorrhage. And after that, rapid progression of disease in the absence of treatment. Now, after that, coming towards the investigations vitreous or aqueous PCR assay for viral DNA. Uh, antibody assay, of course, is this uh, effective as compared to PCR. And then, of course, there's the treatment. Intravenously, 15 mg per kilogram every 8 hours of AC, uh, acyclovir for 10 to 14 days, and then orally 800 mg 5 times daily for 6 to 12 weeks. Um, this may hasten resolution of acute retinal lesions and dramatically reduce the risk of second eye involvement. Long term therapy is occasionally required. Uh, oral dal uh, acyclovir or famciclovir may be substituted for oral acyclovir uh, with similar outcomes but better tolerability. Val acyclovir 2 grams orally 3 times daily can be used as an induction dose followed by maintenance to the 1 gram orally 3 times a day. Uh, Intravitreal gancyclovir or phoscarnate may improve the prognosis as well. Uh, then coming towards systemic steroids. They may be started 24 hours after the initiation of antiviral therapy, especially in severe cases. Uh, laser retinopexy around the necrotic area has been used in the past but has no effect on the retinal detachment rate and it should be avoided. Vitrectomy for ignatogenous RD commonly with silicone oil tamponade is also done. So this concludes our topics of acute and uh, progressive retinal necrosis and both of them are very important conditions. The virus uh, 
which is uh, which are actually it's a group of viruses that are culprit and these both of the cases are the herpes viruses uh, herpes simplex and herpes zoster we have to uh, consider the differences and similarities in both the cases and since the visual outcome is very poor we need to understand uh, uh, the diagnosis and we need to identify it as soon as possible uh, so that the aggressive treatment can be done as soon as possible so if you have any questions you can mention them in the comments and uh, please like and subscribe the channel thank you all